welcome back to the fly, everything fly fishing. Do you want to know what the deadliest pattern for bass is? Because now waters are warming up and it's getting too warm to trout fish and it's time to go bass fishing. We are going to show you what our favorite pick for bass fly is and we're starting right now. Hey, welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. If you're new here, make sure you click the bell notification so you don't miss any of our videos like this, teaching you flies and ways to catch more fish when you're on the water. It's warming up, it's bass fishing time, and we're going to bring you some bass flies in the next couple weeks. So don't make sure you're here next Wednesday, or like I said, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of these videos. And let's get to the first one, the white... SOB, a deadly, deadly bass fly. Let's get the advice. This fly is going to go real fast, so make sure you pay attention. Don't blink or you're going to miss it. We're going to add wire. It don't matter what gauge wire. I'd use the heaviest gauge wire you have. I like that. And a lot of lead to this fly, so you don't have to add any um split shots later or very few split shots later. So I like weighing them down, so let's add our lead. Now, you're gonna tie on some white thread. Don't matter what kind of thread you use, thicker, better, thin is fine, whatever, just use white thread. And you're gonna run that up and down the lead, tie that lead in pretty real well. Then you're gonna take your thread back to the back of the bend of the hook. Now you're gonna tie the tail and you're gonna take a feather. And you need the whole feather. You don't want just a little pluff, the little fluff with a little teeny mini marabou. You want the whole feather marabou for woolly buggers and you want to get the real long ones and you're going to pinch this in and make a tail i'd say about half you can do a half three quarters pick how long you want your tail it's not i'm not too picky on that since i uh, kind of came up with it uh you stick the tail out about three quarters of distance tie it down pull the feather back and red, run your thread up to the eye of the hook Now you're going to wait, uh, take that rest of that feather, and instead of cutting off like you're making a woolly bugger, you're going to take that and wrap that hackle style. And try not to pinch any of the feathers down as you're wrapping it forward. And it should look like, like a big fluff ball. And just keep wrapping that forward till you get to the end of the feather. Get as many wraps around that as you can. And like I said, pull the feathers out or whatever so you don't trap them down. So you get right up to the eyelet, you want to get as many wraps around as you can. So you just have a little bit of waste when you cut it up and then tie it down right behind the eyelet. And then I like to pull that, what's left of your feather back and wrap in front of it and tie it down good. I like to build up the head of the fly, so I keep pull it, keep pulling everything back, and, t and adding thread wraps, pulling it back, and adding thread wraps to build a big head right behind the eye. That that way it's easier to tie on, and it keeps everything away. Then you just cut off the uh, little piece, the extra piece that you folded back, whip finish it, and you're done. Okay, while we do some uh, whip finishing on this, um, we're gonna get you a better look at this fly. And uh, wait till the end after that, we're gonna talk about more about this fly. Fish I've heard that it caught, all kinds of stuff. So 
let's get a closer look at the fly and then we'll talk some more and let's get a closer look at that fly right now We usually don't talk during this part of the fly, we just show you the uh, part of the video, we just show you the fly. But we're going to show you, here's what it would look like dry, and then we're going to take to you what it looks like wet. So when it's coming through the water, it's going to be out puffed like that until you pull on it. Then it's going to go thin, and it's going to get puffy, thin, puffy, thin, puffy, thin, puffy. And uh, that's what makes it a deadly fly. Hope you like that fly. That's a real awesome fly. And that one landed me in this book, America's Favorite Flies. And I'm sure I have a link down below. If not, I'll add it. Now you can see it. Now you can see it or not. That's our fly. That's the white SOB. The one you guys just taught you. And when Dave was right that book he got a hold of me he said what's your favorite fly it's going to be called america's favorite flies and i had to tell him about the way this would be and here's a little story for you we were fishing a while back we were nymph fishing and we weren't catching any fish no nymphs we could tie on no dries to be had so i tied one of this on and you could tie this in a big or little size and i tied i think it was a size 12 it wasn't so big it was just a little way that would be not like the one we tied today it was on a size 10. Um, the, uh, he says, what is that big white blob of fluff? He says, it just laughed at me. He says, you know, he, I think he sit down on the bank, take a cigarette break. And after that white SOB, we just run nymphs now through this hole for an hour without no luck at any fish. And I had five on in like 15 minutes using the white SOB. It is my favorite go-to fly. It is amazing. And uh, I did this video a while back. It was the deadliest streamer you, fly you must have or something like that. It got 65,000 views. So if you're watching this video, make sure you subscribe. I mean, at 65,000, I only have 1,500 subscribers. I should have had 25,000 from the 65,000. So if you watch this video, make sure you subscribe. It helps significantly and everything on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to help us out. Thank you. And people have written since then that they've caught salmon on it in Alaska. They've caught, oh, it's unreal the now the fish that these people have caught on my white SOB since I came out with it about two years ago. Well, I've been fishing it for years. That story happened to be 15 years old. Where the guy said, well, and by after I caught them five fish, he tied one on and went to a hole below me and he caught four or five. And he, both these holes we had been nymphed thoroughly. Lots of different nymphs. And it's amazing. When I, from now on, when I, after that, 15 years ago, if uh, you can ask Tracy if I'm not catching anything before we pack it up and go home, I'll throw the white SOB on and chuck it out there. And sometimes it works, sometimes it ain't. But as we are bass fishing, it is the deadliest bass fly. You could tie this up in black. You could put a bead on the front, tie it in black, tie it in red, tie it in yellow, tie it in, you name it, tie it in different colors. The bass love them. But I think it's because all the, the big foo action it gets in the water goes thin, looks like a mini, and then it, when it stops, it goes like this and it breathes. That drives the bass crazy. So tie some up. You're definitely going to want to have them in your box. Like I said before, I only have maybe two streamers patterns I use. This one and the Olive Lively, or the Olive, Olive Lively, like Olive Woolly Bugger, Black and Olive Woolly Bugger for trial. At Bass, I have a lot more um, bright craziness, and I will be bringing them the next couple weeks. But this is definitely, all the other patterns I have for Bass are not streamers. Uh-huh. So... Be watching for them coming up and make sure you tie this deadly, deadly streamer up. If you don't, 
and your friend does, he's going to outfish you. So have them in your bet box. Thank you for watching. Watch all our playlists around in here. Make sure you subscribe. See that picture of me? Hit that subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss any notifications when we produce a video. And keep your lines wet. Out of the trees and only give them fish a sore lip.